FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next. This episode of the Financial Survival Network is brought to you in part by Sandstorm Gold Royalties. Sandstorm Gold Royalties is a different kind of gold company. They purchase royalties on select mining operations and receive a percentage of the revenue in return. Sandstorm now has a portfolio of over 185 gold royalties around the world. See how gold royalties differ from other gold mining investments at sandstormgold.com. That's sandstormgold.com. Sandstorm Gold Royalties trades on the TSX as SSL and on the New York Stock Exchange American as SAND. Welcome. You are listening to the Financial Survival Network. I'm Kerry Lutz. It's 1919. Make of that what you will. Hey, the email address is kl at kerrylutz.com. If you want to get involved, we love hearing from you, getting your emails. I usually read them in the morning at an undisclosed coffee shop nearby that uh, once was going to be my de facto studio, but they just didn't have enough power outlets to accommodate me. And anyways, uh, we love hearing from you. So send them in. Well, you know that identity theft is on everyone's mind. So many of you out there have written me telling me you've had your identity appropriated. We've got 22 million illegal immigrants in this country, a large percentage of them are engaging in identity theft. So it's something you need, you really need to be aware of. You need to understand what's happening here. And person who probably knows best of anybody out there, and you've heard him on the show before, is, is Robert Siciliano. And Robert, I mean, you've made this your your life's cause. You've been at the forefront of it. We really appreciate you coming back on the show. It's my pleasure. And frankly, if I can find a new line of work where I don't have to talk about this because it's a non-issue, <laughs> I'd be perfectly happy with that. We all would. We all would. Hey, your website is safr.me, safr.me. Go check it out. A lot of useful information there, especially on the blog, personal security advice. So I think we've made some progress in identity theft. You know, you can shut down your credit report uh, on most of the, I think two of the three major uh, providers, uh, TransUnion, Equifax, and Experian. You have an app, you can shut it down, but you have to be a subscriber to these sites to their services in order to shut down or lock down your credit report, right? So things have evolved. Um, The good news is that you can now freeze your credit and your kids' credit. And when I say kids, that's 17 and under, right? Because they are still children in the eyes of the law. You can freeze your credit and your kids' credit at all four credit bureaus. That's TransUnion, Experian, Equifax, and Innovis, I-N-N-O-V-I-S, that's four credit bureaus. Uh, You can freeze your credit and your kids for free at all four credit bureaus as of uh, September 20th, 2018. Mm -hmm. So that's all relatively brand new. As a result of the Equifax breach back in 2017, uh, Congress uh, passed uh, legislation uh, shortly afterwards, uh, well, almost uh, a year later, uh, that uh, made it uh, required the credit bureaus to provide those free credit reports to everybody, no matter what your age is, and across all four credit bureaus. All right. So this Innovis, all right, they are a newcomer onto the scene. Like, why did we need another one? It, every time somebody else is handling your personal data, that greatly increases the odds of a data breach and that your information is going to be misappropriated by the by the criminal class, doesn't it? Yeah. So, you know, we live in what we call a, a database society. And in a database society, that means that all of our information, name, address, phone number, mobile phone, home phone, uh, your various account numbers, whether it's a bank account number, credit card number, and then all of our usernames, which is often our email addresses and our associated passwords with all of our logins. 
and a ton more information, of course, social security numbers and birth dates and everything else. In a database society, our information isn't just on one database. It's in hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of data breach uh, databases. And, you know, statistically, the sad uh, news is that, you know, in 2000. 16, there were about uh, 4,700 data breaches in 2016, equating to about 4 billion records stolen. And that was about 3 billion more records that were stolen in 2013, which is the previous all time high. And then in 2017, there were another 8 billion records stolen, about 5,200 right. data breaches. So that's, you know, 10,000 data breaches. In uh, what uh, twelve billion records stolen just in 2016 and 17, and here we are. You know, we've concluded 2018, and it looks as if there's somewhere between four plus billion records stolen in 2018. So we're at 16 billion just in the past three years. That means essentially that your data, you know, pretty much everything about you that has been uh, entered into one website, one data base or another is probably in the hands of criminals as we speak. And that means that your identity effectively has already been stolen. And I know that's not good news for anybody. And you're like, okay, well, what does that mean? You know, how do I protect myself and so on? It means that it's going to take some time for the bad guys to get to you if they haven't already. So you may not have been affected by any type of you know, financial fraud or have been inconvenienced in any way at this point. But it's likely that your data is being sifted through. It's being sold and brokered, you know, to and by criminals. And it's just a matter of time until they get access to your usernames and passwords that have been compromised in one data breach or another. It's, it's just a matter of time to they get to your social security number. So you are, uh, as a potential victim, responsible right now to do certain things to protect yourself, putting various systems in place and making sure to essentially make your data useless to the thief. Mm-hmm. So basically the burden's on you. The government's not going to come to your assistance, to your aid. They're not going to do anything for you. The bureaus aren't going to do anything. I mean, look, the biggest... The biggest one, and it was a horrible breach, was the Equifax breach. I don't know why those people aren't in jail, because they were criminally negligent and they cashed in on their negligence by dumping their stock before it went public. They concealed it for months and months. I mean, I'm not one for believing that corporations are automatically evil, Robert, but when you see a corporation behave that way, Look, Arthur Anderson was put out of business and it turned out they didn't even do anything that wrong. These guys were really, really just, it's beyond the pale, Equifax. No question. So at this point, you know, the government really, it's to a degree out of their hands. You know, like what can they do other than if the government was to say, Uh, require that all consumers credit is frozen across the board, which they haven't done that, uh, that would uh, stem the tide of what's called new account fraud. New account fraud is when the bad guy gets your social security number and they open up new lines of credit under your name. uh, And to prevent that, you get yourself a credit freeze. Well, because credit freezes aren't required across the board, you know, meaning that, um, uh, you know, your credit isn't just automatically frozen. You have to go ahead and do it. Well, that boils down to you, in fact, you know, having to go and freeze your credit. So that is a responsibility that you must take and a task that you must engage in. And once you freeze your credit, that will effectively, in most cases, prevent new account fraud. Again, when somebody opens up a new credit card account, gets an auto loan, they can even refinance your own home, even getting a utility that requires credit, getting a mobile phone account that requires credit, and so on. Freezing your credit right now at all four credit bureaus and your kids really is the best thing that you could do to prevent new account fraud. But there's so many other forms of identity theft that can occur as a result of all these data breaches and one, you know, specifically is account takeover. So we just discussed new account fraud and account takeover is when they take over existing accounts. And that can mean a bunch of different things depending on what kind of accounts we're talking about. Mm. So, for example, with credit cards, right, account takeover with credit cards, your existing credit cards that are in your wallet, 
the way they take over your existing accounts, you know, and that could be anything from a gas station attendant or a restaurant server, just, you know, skimming your card and using your card unauthorized. And the only way you're going to know about that is if you're paying attention to your statements or if, you know, your card number is compromised in a data breach and the card is used without your authorization, you're not going to know about it unless you're paying attention to your statements. So you can't, you cannot prevent credit card fraud, meaning yeah. once your card numbers are in the hands of anybody, you can't prevent them from misusing it. But what you can do and what you should do is pay close attention to your statements and refute unauthorized transactions as they occur in real time. And the best way to do that is by signing up for alerts and notifications, or they also are called push alerts or push notifications that your credit card company or your bank will send to you in real time as your card is being charged. So for example, you know, if you're one of those people that adamantly pays attention to your statements, you might be doing it every month when you get your paper statement in the mail, or you might be doing it online as often as you want. But you can also, and what I do is I get push notifications and that's the best way to go about it because every single time your card is charged in real time, you get a text message or an email right away. That way, if you did not actually, you know, charge that, uh, then you can contact your bank or credit card company right away and they will, you know, stop that transaction. They'll make you whole and more than likely they'll, uh, you know, change out your credit, credit card, card and send you out another one because your card number had been compromised. So my wife and I, we share uh, various credit cards, including our American Express. And very recently, uh, I was home. It was, uh, you know, like a Tuesday morning. The kids were on their way to school with their mom. You know, the mom was driving the kids to school. And I get two, te I get two text messages from American Express uh, you know, consecutively saying there was a $17 and an $18 charge at Whole Foods. And so I call my wife while she's driving and I say, Hey honey, are you, you know, at Whole Foods? She's like, no, I'm driving the kids to school. I'm like, did you, were you at Whole Foods in the past couple of days? Or, you know, did you order anything online? Like we just got a couple of text messages from Amex saying, you know, that there was some Whole Foods charges. Any reason to believe why you did that? She's like, I haven't been to Whole Foods in months. Yeah. I'm like, well, there you go. That's why I get these push notifications because in real time, it told me that it was fraud. And um, I contacted American Express and they removed those charges from my card and sent me out another card. That's really the most proactive way to prevent or deal with account takeover. And the other thing is in regards to password management. So many of us, maybe even you, you know, many of us, we use the same passwords across multiple accounts, right? right. That Definitely. is not cool, it's not okay. And what that means is like, if you use the same password for your Facebook as you do for your Twitter, as you do for your bank account, as you do for your credit card company, and so on, and any of your accounts are compromised in a data breach, meaning that your username, which is often your email address and your password for whatever account is compromised in a data breach, and you use the same username, email address, and password across a lot of different accounts, which, you know, I use the same username across pretty much all my accounts, but I use a different password across all my accounts. But if you use the same username and password and one account gets compromised, the bad guy can take your credentials and they can plug that into like the top 100 websites out there. It could be Expedia, Visa, MasterCard, American Express, Bank of America, and so forth, all of your investment accounts. And if you use the same credentials, they just log in because sure. they have your credentials via one particular data breach and they know we're lazy and we use the same credentials and now they just log in. That is one very effective way that your accounts can be taken over, account takeover, because we're lazy and we use the same credentials across multiple accounts. The best way to thwart that, the best way to prevent that is by using a different password for every single account. And what that boils down to is you have to essentially uh, use a password manager. And a password manager is just what it says. It's a software program that manages your passwords across all your different accounts. And it, it allows you to have a different password for every account, meaning you assign a different password for each of your online accounts and your password manager records that, that information and will automatically provide you, you know, with that yep. login anytime you log into that various accounts. And people say, well, what if my password manager gets hacked? I'm not worried about my password manager getting hacked. 
What I'm worried about is everybody using the same password across multiple accounts. Correct. That Correct. is the low-hanging fruit. The password manager getting hacked is the least of your concerns. The most of your concerns is using the same password across various accounts. Absolutely. And the beauty is for if you're an Apple fanboy or girl, uh, the password manager is encrypted and is available on all of your devices. So you don't have to try to remember it. If you're using just the uh, Google Chrome, yes, it will work on multiple devices, but you have to be logged in to Google Chrome. And that may be a plus or a minus, depending on your bent there. But the Apple infrastructure works almost flawlessly. Sometimes it won't update a password that it should have, which is annoying, but easily remedied. And, and then they also suggest a very complicated password for each each account that you sign up for. So they're virtually unbreakable. They're totally randomly generated passwords. And that can give you another level of protection there, right? That's correct. They will provide a, you know, 10, 12, 14 uh, number, letter, character, password that's essentially undecipherable, not something you'll ever actually remember. But you don't need to remember it because your password manager remembers it for you. And yeah, you have all kinds of options. You know, Google Chrome offers a password manager and Apple offers a password manager. I do like Apple's. Apple's is good. But then the third party ones, like if you're in a Windows machine, are, you know, uh, as good, if not better than the Apple one. So using your browser as a password manager, I think is a little scary. I don't actually have my browser remember anything, but yeah. my password manager remembers everything, um, both Windows and Apple PCs in my life. Uh, and, you know, keeping in mind, right, like, so I'm 50 and my memory is okay, right? But, you know, I don't, rem I don't know my dad's mobile phone number. I couldn't tell you my mother's mobile phone number. Right, and I contact right. my parents all the time, mm -hmm. but I don't need to know my parents' mobile phone number because my mobile phone knows it. It remembers it. Right. It's recorded. And it's the same thing with passwords. Like you don't need to remember passwords anymore because your password manager remembers it for you. And once you engage in that basic tool you know, for maybe 20 bucks a year for a password manager or 50 bucks for life, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. You're good, and you don't have to be concerned about the same password across multiple accounts ever again. Yeah. Yeah, so that's passwords. But then there's always the danger that your phone, your computer, uh, whatever device you have, your refrigerator, your DVR, any of them can be hacked at any moment, right? Yeah, so that requires the individual, you know, you, to um, engage in um, – basic computer security, you know, like that's antivirus, anti-spyware, anti-phishing, and a firewall, you know, basically installing all the, 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 the required security software that every device, including an Apple machine, because Apple's needs need antivirus the same way mm -hmm. PCs do, installing antivirus uh, software on your machine. I always recommend a paid version opposed to a free version. You kind of get what you pay for regarding the um, free version, whereas if you go with the paid version, you're going to be that much more secure. Uh, and then you know, being uh, aware regarding all the various scams that go on out there. You know, every time the phone rings, be suspect. Every time an email comes in, be suspect. Heck, anytime any, somebody knocks at the door, anytime there's a pop-up, like, you know, the, the bad guys are going to make an effort to contact you in a number of different ways. And you have to be cognizant that there's always somebody out there trying to pick your pocket, whether in the physical world or digitally. And if you're not paying attention, you know, when an email comes in or the phone rings and your blood pressure begins to rise because of some imminent issue in your life or whatever it might be, your account's going to be closed or mm -hmm. your grandchild is got arrested and he needs your help or whatever BS they sling at you and your blood pressure starts to rise and you feel this immediate need to act. Those are red flags that something is wrong, not just, you know, yeah. based on the information on the call, something's wrong. Like this isn't normal. And it's that, 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 that red flag, that, that, that blood pressure rising that should say to you, something isn't right about this situation, no matter what they're saying to you, emailing you, whatever, like that is 
more than likely 99 times out of 100, it's fraud. And if you're not cognizant of that, then you're just bait. And it's just a matter of time until they, they you know, chew you up. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, you got to be, you have multi-level security, different layers, just like you would to protect your home, whether it's an alarm, a person at the gate, a dog, uh, cameras, you need layers of security, multi-layered because they get through one layer. And if you've got another layer waiting, it'll be a lot harder for them to get through. But, uh, but what do you think is the most dangerous way to get breached that, uh, that so few people really ever defend against? You know, people are spending a little too much time on various social sites. They're saying too much and they're revealing too much data about themselves. They're plugging information into various games and quizzes like the 25 things that people don't know about me. And a lot of times what you're plugging in are the answers to the questions that you might answer when you go to reset a password. So we're, we're just you know, regurgitating a tremendous amount of information in social media that can be used against us. The phishing emails, that really is the biggest problem that employees of corporations face and, and regular everyday consumers. You know, they're clicking links in the body of an email where they shouldn't be clicking links. And then when they do that, they download a virus. And when they download that virus on their machine, it records and spies on everything that they do all day long. So, you know, like I said, the, the, the social media, the, every time the phone rings, every time an email comes in, you have to be suspect. We make ourselves vulnerable in so many different ways. And then, you know, like going back to the very basics, you know, when you throw something in the trash, piece of paper, food waste, whatever, you know, it goes out into your garbage and on trash day, it's out there for the trash people to pick up. Right mm -hmm. now, if you think about this question for a second, like if you were, you know, in your kitchen and you're looking out your window and you see the trash guy come or, or, you, or you see some guy come in a pickup truck and he throws your trash bags in the back of his pickup truck, mm -hmm. right? He, would you be worried about that? Would you think, oh, no, this is not good because some guy in a pickup truck threw his, your trash in his pickup truck? And if, and if any one of you say like, yeah, that would be a problem for me, I'd be concerned about that, then that means you're throwing stuff away that's valuable to you. You're throwing away stuff that could be used against you. Like if somebody comes and throws my trash bags in their pickup truck and they decide to go through my trash, they're not going to find anything that's going to come back and bite me or my clients for that matter. So I make sure that everything that goes out in the trash is something that absolutely positively in any way, shape or form cannot be used to compromise my physical security or my, you know, uh, identity. So uh, keep your garbage secure, use a shredder. I've got a shredder and they've come down so much in price and they're so much better than they ever were. This thing, 12 sheets cross cuts it and there's no way anybody's going to figure out what was in that document. So very obvious and very often overlooked when you're trying to figure out how to secure your place. And, you know, the, the thing is, it's not even a crime to pick up somebody's garbage. Um, you know, obviously, if you have bad intentions, that might be a crime. But picking up somebody's garbage, it's abandoned property. And just like the police could pick it up and search through for evidence, anybody is free to pick it up and uh, find out about you. So even junk mail, I don't like anything with my name going into my garbage. I don't want any identifying information in there. And I think we'll, Robert, we'll leave it at that. But I think, I think people really need to go to your site, read your articles, because there's just so many vulnerabilities today that uh, it's hard for any one person to keep track of them, isn't it? Yeah. You know, it, look, at this all boils down to basic, you know, security awareness, uh, knowing what your options are, uh, creating good habits, eliminating bad habits. Uh, come to my website at safer.me. That's S-A-F-R dot M-E, you know, for a safer, smarter me. And uh, I have, you know, all kinds of books and videos and a blog, e-learning courses, like stay in touch and 
I help, you know, small businesses, large corporations, anyone get up to speed on what they need to do to prevent this happening from under your watch. Hey, we really appreciate you coming on, Robert. Hey, make sure you lock down those credit reports now. I didn't even know about this Anovis company. I just requested my free credit report from them. We'll see what they come up with. And like we needed another one. All they're doing probably is undercutting the three major ones to get people to subscribe businesses to their service because the oligopoly of credit reporting agencies, you know, it was down to three and now we got another one to worry about. But like you said, we're in so many databases all over the place, probably doesn't make that much difference. Anyway, uh, right to the show, get involved. KL at Kerry If you're listening on YouTube or through other podcast means, then please uh, subscribe, share, and like the show. It really helps me when you do that. It helps get the message out and helps get people the information they need to protect yourself in this con- current environment and to thrive in what I'm calling the new, new economy. Hey, Robert, it's always great to have you on. Thanks so much. Thank you, Kerry. FSN Radio. It's all about what's next. Go to FinancialSurvivalNetwork.com and sign up for your free weekly newsletter. You'll also get three free reports. The Financial Survival Network. It's all about what's next.